As an Australian, I have a long and interesting lineage. My father's side has been traced back to the Wallace clan of Scotland. That is, I am a direct descendant of the Scottish knight William Wallace. My mother's side has its origins in Scandinavia, specifically Denmark, so I'm a descendant of both Scottish Highland warriors and Scandinavian Vikings. You would think that I would have a bit more fight in me. Anyway, the following is a somewhat biographical, albeit embellished, account of one of my mischievous ancestors who had high hopes of becoming an archaeologist in Denmark. This event predates modern electronics and the internet, so keep that in mind when listening. Trickster! Con artist! Imposter! These were some of the accusations levelled against me during my expulsion hearing at the Academy. I had great hopes. I was well on my way to becoming a renowned Scandinavian archaeologist. I was doing everything expected of me to fit into so-called civilised society. But it was all a farce. I cheated during the examinations. I paid others to do my work. I had a team of freshmen writing my dissertation for me for crying out loud. An ordinary person would have been caught, but I had a few aces up my sleeve. On one such occasion, late in the evening, I caught my professor in a rather compromising situation with the headmaster's foot maiden. It's amazing how far blackmail will take you, but with so many people involved in my elaborate web of lies, it was only a matter of time till somebody blabbed. And that's exactly what happened. Somehow, the prosecutors were able to assemble a lineup of 13 witnesses who had first-hand accounts of my transgressions. Three of them were obvious shills paid off by the student council, but unfortunately for me, the other ten only spoke truth. Was my coin too little? Were my threats too lenient? The evidence was compelling. The board had no other option but to strip me of all titles and expel me from the academy there and then. And as if that weren't enough, they imposed a 99-year ban, forbidding me access to all academic resources, buildings and personage. If any academic faculty were to come within 30 feet of me, they would suffer the same fate. I was officially an outcast. So now it's all over. I'm stuck out in the real world, trying to make a coin. Did any of this stop me from becoming, read, pretending to be, an archaeologist? Never. There's still a fire in my belly that won't go out. One of my professors at the academy once said, The foundational purpose of the archaeologist is to uncover truth. History does not lie. Ha! I proved him wrong. I was able to pay off a cleaner, yes, an actual cleaner, to make my academic history disappear. Puff! Ah, a clean slate. The world is my oyster. As time passed, I grew weary of the city. It was time for a tree change. The great Silkborg Forest was in sight. I decided to team up with a couple of other misfits, Olaf, a fortune teller and mystic, and Vilmar, a large man with pretensions of knighthood. Ha! I'll believe it when I see it. But we complement each other. I know enough about the hypocrisies of Scandinavian society, and they know enough about survival in Silkborg. Together, we can find our fortunes in the ruins of the great forest. It was such a shame that while exploring the depths of one such ruin, I happened to be seized by the ankle by an unknown creature and pulled into the dark waters below. It really is true. Life does flash before your eyes as your lungs fill with water. I may be drowning, but I am not drowned. I still have these thoughts flooding my mind. Some call me dastard. Some call me thief. Some call me vagabond. That beggar's belief. I am an outcast in this world of grey, a world of truth caught in the midst of fray. I am dastard. I am thief. I will not die today in this godforsaken reef. Now where's my boot knife? Time to inflict some pain on my tormentors.